What the Cuban Revolution Means to the Cubans The Cuban Revolution is a series of events that took place in Cuba from December 1956 to April 1959. The revolution resulted in the overthrow of Cuban President Fulgencio Batista and the creation of the new government under Fidel Castro. The revolutionaries were victorious after they took control over most of the country and executed Batista on January 1, 1959. The revolution transformed Cuba into a communist state with Fidel as its leader. It also marked a shift in global politics when it became one of only two countries in Latin America, with Nicaragua, to break from U.S. domination during this period. The Cuban Revolution is widely considered to be one of the most important events in 20th century world history. After that, Castro shared power with his brother Raul and established an egalitarian society based on socialist ideas. This led to the Cuban Revolution being a significant catalyst of the Cold War. U.S.-Cuban relations have been tense since Fidel Castro's rise to power in 1959, but they reached a low point in 1962 when the U.S. imposed an economic embargo on Cuba. Since then, there has been some improvement, but relations are still mostly strained because of Cuba's close ties to Russia. In January 1959, Cuban revolutionary Fidel Castro and his brother Raul Castro overthrew the dictator Fulgencio Batista. They executed Batista and established a communist dictatorship, which would last for decades. The U.S. did not intervene in Cuba's revolution, but relations with Cuba soon became tense with the Soviet Union in 1959. The U.S. embargoed trade with Cuba, but using its military alliance with Cuba, the Soviet Union eventually forced the U.S. out of 1962. U.S. policy towards Cuba changed dramatically in 1963 when John F. Kennedy became president and instituted a series of policies designed to change Cuba's communist government that included increasing diplomatic efforts. In April 1961, U.S. President John F. Kennedy authorized the failed Bay of Pigs invasion to oust Fidel Castro. In October 1962, U.S. President John F. Kennedy and Cuban leader Fidel Castro announced they would both pull their troops out of their country's border regions. In October 1962, the United States broke diplomatic relations with Cuba and began a trade embargo. The Rise and Fall of Fidel Castro's Rule in Cuba Fidel Castro's rule in Cuba was a long and difficult one. It all started with his triumph against the Batista dictatorship in 1959. After that, he declared himself as the new leader of Cuba and started to implement socialism. Castro's rule as a dictator brought many changes to Cuba but also caused many problems. The first thing he did to implement socialism was nationalizing all industries and other key assets in Cuba. This included the sugar industry, which was previously owned by U.S. American multinational conglomerate companies. Castro also established state control over foreign trade and reorganized labor. In Cuba, the state ran all major industries, so they controlled all production and distribution of the goods within their country. The Cuban government also formed a ministry of sport to encourage physical education and sports as a means of socializing the population into socialist ideas. To what extent did Fidel Castro use revolutionary rhetoric to persuade Cubans? The first thing he did after taking over power was replacing Spanish with his native language, which is Spanish. He also changed the name of Cuba to Socialist Republic of Cuba to emphasize the importance of a socialist society in the country. He also told Cubans that they would be able to eat three times a day. Fidel Castro also called himself an infant terrible, which means he was speaking about his own work. How did Havana change after Fidel Castro took power? Because he wanted to rid the city of its deep-rooted class distinctions, Fidel Castro renamed Havana La Habana and changed the money from pesos to the Cuban peso. He also used a lowercase a in La Habana instead of a capital letter H. In 1948, Fidel Castro and his 26 men fled Cuba to Mexico. In Mexico, they were given weapons by the Mexican government. Then in 1956, he used the weapons to start a war against the Cuban dictator Fulgencio Batista. After many battles, Fidel Castro gained control of Havana without any resistance from Batista's army. In 1971, Fidel Castro's army invaded Angola, a former Portuguese colony, to try to overthrow the dictator Roberto. In 1994 Cubans were sent to overthrow the dictator Jean-Bertrand Aristide in Haiti. 
the supporters of the revolution did not oppose this sending of soldiers. They argued that, those who defend the Cuban government are defending their own country. The U.S. invaded Iraq in 2003 with the support of its allies and friends. The supporters of this invasion supported it because they thought the U.S. was doing something good. Our next step as a nation, Cuba's future. Cuba is a country that has been through many changes throughout its history. However, it has also remained steadfast in its values and beliefs. The future of Cuba is uncertain, but with the support of their people, they can continue to grow and prosper. The next step for Cuba is to continue to develop their economy and infrastructure while maintaining their cultural identity. In 2005, Fidel Castro announced that he would retire in 2008. After the death of Fidel Castro in 2016, there was a power struggle between the Castro brothers and Raul finally gained control of the country. The future after Raul's presidency is uncertain, but they have been able to maintain their cultural identity while progressing with their economy. Cuba is a country in Caribbean a total area of 110,860 square miles. In 2018 Cuba had a population of 11,838,882. The population density is one person per square mile. The capital and largest city is Havana. Cuba has an oceanic climate that ranges from humid subtropical to tropical rainy forests spring fall as the trade winds blow from the northeast. The official language is Spanish, with some English speakers on the island due to tourism. The Cuban economy is primarily based on sugar, while a significant portion of the economy comes from tourism. Cuba is divided into 15 provinces. The Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism has its headquarters in Havana. Cuba is the world's 13th largest island. It is surrounded by the Caribbean Sea to the north, the Gulf of Mexico to its west, by Jamaica, Haiti, and the Bahamas to its south. Cuba also has significant tourism which has grown in recent decades, with over 5 million visitors in 2016. Cuba has historically been a central and an important part of the region's cultural landscape. The island has been occupied by many different cultures throughout its history. It was inhabited by the Taino people, followed by the Spanish, who brought large land grants to colonists loyal to them and enslaved many of the Taino in the process. This is all about Cuba, don't forget to subscribe for more videos, thank you.